What's going on everybody? King of Dragons 5000 here coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Collect to Build Atrocitus. And so finally here we do have Atrocitus fully assembled and let's actually take a look at his details because unfortunately Atrocitus does not come with any accessories. And so here we have a look at the fully assembled Atrocitus. And I think McFarlane has done a pretty good job here with Atrocitus, although I do have some issues with the figure. We'll start with his head. It's a really good head sculpt for Atrocitus. He has the chin that we've come to love from Atrocitus with these little um, ports in his face. I don't know what these are, but they are just grotesque looking, and I absolutely love it. And they did a really good job with the, sh the shading on his face the yellow eyes are very piercing and I absolutely love that and then they did include his um, collar piece on his head now I know that this is a build a figure and all but there was something throwing off the look of this figure and it took me a while to figure out what it was what it is is that his collar should actually sit about that high it should actually be sitting like about that level with his shoulder pads and unfortunately you can see the bottom of his head which that's not the way it's supposed to be his collar is supposed to be about right there and it's supposed to encase his head more um, I understand why McFarlane did it the way they did but they should have either made his head sit lower or made his shoulder pads sit higher but yeah that is throwing off the look of this figure just a little bit, but overall still really impressed by the detailing. You can see they did add some black wash and line work to his, uh, I'm going to just call it a collar piece because it is on his collar and it just goes very high. Really do like that. And then we go on to his shoulder pads where they could have done a little bit of detail. They should have actually taken the panel lining that they did on his collar and just apply it here on his shoulder pads. Because his shoulder pads do have a lot of nice detail. They, it almost looks like there's a red lantern insignia right here. And it does go down over here. Now, unfortunately, with no panel lining or black wash, you really don't see that detail too much, which I think that's a missed opportunity. Really do love the red lantern insignia on his chest. That is a very, very nice piece. And I absolutely love the fact that it's sculpted. He does have his red uh, piece of his uniform, which they did in this really nice, smooth, glossy red, which I really do like. Now, unfortunately, the costume isn't 100% accurate to what Atrocitus should have. I want to say this should be a little bit wider. The red, I feel, is a little bit thin, and it does come down to about where it needs to. But at the collar piece right up here, it should also be red. You shouldn't have any black right here. I think it was just a liberty that McFarlane took with this figure. But yeah, it is throwing off the look of Atrocitus just a little bit because all this is supposed to be red. There's supposed to be no black right there. That's kind of like the Blue Lanterns have. But yeah, it's still a very nice look. I just think it throws off the uh, comic book look. And then another thing throwing me off is that he has no... Um, pattern on the back of his outfit and um, in the comics he does have a pattern on the back kind of like it has right here in the front should be mirrored here on the back doesn't come as low but yeah that is pretty obvious that something is missing on him he feels a little incomplete when you look at him from the back but looking at him from the front it does do its job very nicely and i do like that so having a look at the rest of the figure his gauntlets right here do have the red lantern insignia once again but again I would have liked to see some uh, line work here on those panel lines just to bring up that really nice detail. It's really nicely sculpted. It just lacks uh, any, any type of paint to bring that out and I feel that's a missed opportunity. He does have his red lanterns uh, ring sculpted on right there and it's actually done very nicely but unfortunately it's the same color as his fist and there's no paint work on that ring so it just kind of looks like a little blob i would have liked to see some paint work just to give a different shade of red to his ring versus his flesh tone so yeah missed opportunity there by mcfarlane and i do like the fact that they did take a liberty and actually sculpted the detailing here on his outfit much like they did with kyle rayner it kind of does look like spandex but at the same time it doesn't and it's still form fitting so really good job there then we have a look at his boots which i do like that 
but again it should have some paintwork on it I don't know why they put some paint effort onto his head and then they left all the rest of it alone because there's a lot of good detailing here on his boots you just get lost in the red with no detail which is really unfortunate boots are red so yeah what we've come to expect from McFarlane really nice McFarlaneized version of Atrocitus so with that out of the way guys let's actually get them compared to other figures you may have in your collection here we have Atrocitus posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman here we have Atrocitus posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure in a Mezco 112 Collective Popeye the Sailor Man here we have Atrocitus posed next to a Lightning Collection White Ranger in a Star Wars Black Series Mandalorian and for one final comparison, here we do have Atrocitus posed next to the DC Direct Atrocitus and the Mattel DC Signature Atrocitus. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually move on to Atrocitus' articulation now. Atrocitus does have your standard McFarlane articulation. He does have a double ball joint here in the head, which does let him look up to about right there. He can look down quite a bit, which is really impressive. I do like his ball joint right here. Does get side to side tilt and then turns left and right. Now one issue I do have is that his shoulder pads don't really pay on all too well. Just because they are made of a softer material, they don't really peg in too tightly. So you are going to be fighting his articulation and shoulder pads quite a bit. As far as his shoulders go, they do go all the way up to about right there before they do pop the shoulder pad off. If the shoulder pad wasn't there, they would go all the way out. Out to the side, they go to about right there. They are on a ball joint, so they do pivot forward and back, up and down as you need them to. He has a bicep here which works really nicely. Double bend here at his elbow. Then we do have a ball hinge here at the wrist so that does have in and out movement. We can rotate that to have up and down movement and it does rotate on that pin. He does have a really nice ball joint here at his torso which does lean back, goes forward to about right there which is pretty decent. Side to side as well as rotates. Then he has a second ball joint here at the waist letting him lean that far back goes that far forward really nicely and um, you do have to be careful because his mid torso is a softer piece and it does have a tendency to get snagged inside his crotch piece uh, does lean side to side as well as rotate then his legs do kick forward to about right there they kick back to about right there out to the side Ooh, very far he is a very flexible man or beast whatever you want to call him thigh swivel surprisingly works really nicely then we do have double bend here at the knees we don't have a boot swivel but we do have an ankle swivel which does swivel nicely then he does have a hinge in the ankle which does work because his boot is a softer material and that does get out of the way as you need it to forward facing pin for rocker ankle and then finally we do have a very generous toe hinge so overall atrocious has some pretty good articulation and it does work for the most part so with that out of the way guys let's get him posed for my final thoughts and then we'll wrap up this review and so here we have the McFarlane Collector Connect Atrocitus pose for my final thoughts and overall I'm really impressed by this Atrocitus figure it is one of the better Atrocitus figures out there to own especially if you're looking for articulation and the fact that this is a build a figure means that if you really do want this figure you do have to collect every figure of this series thankfully McFarlane only releases a series of four figures which is about $25 each if you break it down Atrocitus is essentially a $20 figure because he is is a throw in as accessories now one issue that I honestly have with this figure and I know a lot of people have with this figure is size even though I am a fan of a bigger atrocious I feel like McFarlane might have made this figure a little bit too big if you wanted to compare him in size he is about the same height as dark side and that's the dark side that we got from the Justice League movie this is a really big figure and I'm honestly surprised that he's a build a figure instead of a mega figure because once again he is the same size as Darkseid and Darkseid was a pretty tall figure Atrocitus here towers over a lot of other figures and you did see with the comparisons he's much bigger than a six inch figure this is a very very massive figure and that does turn a lot of people off because they don't see Atrocitus as this really hulking menacing figure and again it's based on the artist's interpretation of the character but 
on in everything that I've looked at, Atrocitus has never been this big. He's been big, but he's never been this massive. I do like it, but at the same time, I kind of wish McFarlane dialed it back just a little bit. Maybe make him wider. I think that's another thing that's throwing me off. If he was a wider figure, that would probably look better. But overall, Atrocious here is a really nice figure to have. And again, he is the builder figure for the Blackest Night series, so you do have to collect all four figures, which is Black Lantern, Batman, Deathstorm, Kyle Rayner, and Black Lantern, Superman. Having all four of those figures makes your very own Atrocious. And again, if you break it down by cost, seeing each figure as their own $20 figure, Atrocious rings in at $20, which is a steal. Yes, you are paying $100 for this figure, but if you break it down per figure, Atrocious at $20, that's a steal. They could have easily sold this figure for 40 bucks. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel. Go ahead and check out all my other action figure reviews as well as all my other McFarlane DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments. And if, it's, if it fits in my collection, I'll gladly have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos. And as always, ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Until next time guys, I'll see you later. Take care everyone.